Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Kai and today I thought I would do something a little bit different. Um, for one, hi, I thought I would finally get on camera and do kind of like a live intro for you all. I have been wanting to put a little bit more of me in my videos, so this is my official introduction, I guess you could say. Um, and I wanted to do this because I am doing a room tour today. So for those of you who have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I recently, well, at this point it was like six months ago, um, I recently moved into a nail office. So I live in a house with my boyfriend and one of our roommates ended up moving out back in like April, May. And instead of filling the room, he and I decided to take it over and turn it into like a game studio and a nail studio. So half of it is like his gaming stuff and the other half is my nail setup and my PC where I edit and also play some games. So I thought I would show you all around. I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I spent a long time um, painting and decorating and trying to organize everything in a way that made sense for nails. So I just thought I would go through, show you everything, and I mean everything. I go through every drawer. This is probably going to be quite the long video. I could have made it twice as long easily, just showing you all of my nail stuff. It's a lot, um, please don't judge. I do have quite a bit. Um, and yeah, I just, I thought maybe it would be, I don't know, entertaining, useful for some people. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is the room. Um, I'm gonna apologize right now because I'm not sure how the audio quality is on this camera. I am just recording with the native microphone in the camera, um, so it might not be the best, but here is the room. Um, I, wish, <laughs> I wish I could zoom out a little bit more, but I do not have, oops, that's zooming in. Um, I do not have like a fish island, so I wish I did for this camera. But let me just go through and show you kind of like each of my stations. That's my boyfriend's side. <laughs> so yeah, to start, here is the entrance. All of this blue and black padding is just soundproofing because my boyfriend and I are in here a lot. Um, we wanted to make sure we weren't bothering our roommates too much. So we put in some soundproofing to hopefully reduce echo and also ensure that they aren't getting too bothered by our shenanigans. Here's a cute little Mario rug that we got. If you noticed, we have kind of like a green plant theme going, or I suppose I have sort of a green plant theme going. He just kind of allowed me to do what I wanted on my side. And so this combines both of our interests, which are video games and plants. So we have the Mario mushroom rug, this is my planning station. So um, I don't think I have anything written here that's secret, but I try to kind of schedule my content as much as possible just because um, it is difficult for me to go into things without a plan. I tend to get overwhelmed and disorganized and jump from idea to idea if I don't have a set plan. So I got this little magnetic calendar. I think it was like $8 from Walmart. It's not super fancy or anything, 
really just a nice dry erase calendar that I can write things down on for each month. But that is my calendar. And then this is my ideas board right here. I often have ideas and um, I don't have time to do them. And so I have this place now where I can write down my ideas, um, categorize them, organize them, and I won't lose track of them. Um, this one here is no longer Kirby Matcha. It is Kirby Sakura, and it should hopefully be coming out soon. Soon as in maybe the next week or so. We'll see when I can get it released. Um, I'm working on it this week as we speak. So yeah, this is my little planning corner. I thought it was good because nothing else could really fit behind the door. And so having these two whiteboards is just really handy for me to be able to keep track of things. I decorated with just some fairy lights, some wisteria garland that I got off of Amazon. These pictures too are just little decorative pictures off of Amazon. They're all like fairy nature themed. You've got some moons some mushrooms. I like mushrooms. I like eating them. I think they look really cool. Uh, that's just something, you know, that I, I am interested in. I also grew up in Alaska. There are a lot of mushroom types up there. So I think maybe that's where my love of mushrooms comes from. But here on this wall, I have also my storage. So I have a couple different set of drawers here. I have two from these two here. These white ones are from Timu. They were pretty cheap. Um, the construction honestly is not so great, but what do you expect for $60? And then this little thing here actually used to be my old nail desk. This is pretty fancy. Um, I'm not gonna show it. Maybe I will. Let me see. So here's actually like a collapsible desk. So you pull out this and then the legs there extend to support it. So this was actually my first nail desk. Um, and as you can see, it's quite a bit smaller than my current nail desk over there. So I did retire it, but because it had this really nice set of drawers attached, I decided to keep it and I just use it for storage now. That's just some more shelves to go up on the wall. I plan on putting them right there um, between my existing nail racks because I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm already running out of space. Um, I'll get to those in a minute, but let me go through this chest of drawers here. On top, we actually have an oxygen monitor. That's because this room is so well soundproofed. Um, sometimes we stick like a little uh, doorstop under there to keep sound from escaping from under the door. And it means that the oxygen levels can drop in the room and we just want to make sure that we're measuring them and making sure that uh, we get proper oxygenation in this room. Uh, there's my plant. He's doing really well. I'm actually very happy about that. He's growing quite long. I may need to actually trim him and put some trimmings back in the water. My sister gave that to me when she moved. So that was very nice of her. So in this chest of drawers, I'm just gonna go through them one by one. This top one um, is kind of a catch-all. It's a lot of products that I haven't tried yet that I'm needing to try. And then I also have like swatch sticks and all of my glass swatches in here. Please ignore my nails. They're awful right now. I cut myself. I <laughs> am planning on filming like a nail application video, and so I've been letting my cuticles grow out, which has resulted unfortunately in some hangnails. So I'm a mess right now, ignore that. But this drawer here, again, is just like things that I need to review, and my swatch sticks, my little glass swatches, um, and just some things that I haven't put away yet. So that's that drawer. This drawer here is a set of, well not a set, it's a couple sets of polishes, um, just older cream polishes that I kind of started with, uh, Model Ones, Beatles, Savaland. These are actually all glow in the dark, which is why I keep these ones around. These ones are like fully cream color polishes, so I keep them because I don't have like a ton of cream polishes when it comes to Korean gels. 
I do want to eventually move up to a collection of cream polishes that are Korean gels, but for now I keep those as like my basics. Uh, down here is a mess. Um, I've got a lot of bubble wrap that I save from packages that I get that I will reuse in my press on orders um, if I send out a package to somebody else. And then a lot of these are items that I have ordered and I have not yet done a video on. I have bad spending habits, <laughs> let me put it that way. They're not that bad. I spend within my means. I don't go overboard. I'm not going into debt or anything, but I definitely, you know, buy things before I use up older things because I see new pretty items that I want. Um, so yeah, some of this is PR, some of it is things that I purchased and I've been meaning to make a video on. I just haven't gotten around to it, so I stick in them in this drawer so I know where they are and I hopefully remember to film them. <laughs> so this whole chest of drawers here is just kind of like things that I need to get to, <laughs> if that makes sense. Over here, I have another chest of drawers and this one, I'm gonna get my plant out of the way. Sorry, the lighting over here isn't so good, but this is <clears throat> um, more things that I need to film. Um, I purchased the, I think it's Crescinia, um, is how you pronounce it, or Crescinia. I think it's Crescinia. Uh, I got her clays. So this is the full collection of the jelly clays. And then I did pick up just some regular colored clays from her. I am saving the packaging because I have plans for using them in some videos, some upcoming videos, and part of that video I wanted to be like a little unboxing. So these are more things that I haven't yet used. Um, yeah, we'll just hide that. <laughs> Up here are more things um, that I still need to use and um, have not exactly shown off in a video yet, and that's why they're in this drawer. Um, a lot of these are from Sweetie Nail Supply, some Korean brands. At this point, you probably have seen the video with these two products. These were, oh, focus. Some um, drill bits that I tried from them. I really like both of them. So these are just, again, some more things that I need to um, do reviews on to try out. Oops, skipped one. This right here is empty, so I have some space still for storing. This one has some empty containers that I haven't let go of yet. I probably should. These are mostly foil containers that I have um, emptied to reorganize my foils, but I'm keeping them in case I find a need to organize some things. I have a bunch of these uh, containers. And then the bottom three drawers are all for my press-on orders. So this one here has a lot of like my packing materials for press-ons. I have my little freebies, my tape, my Gorilla Glue for uh, nail stands, more tape, the uh, application kit items, my stickers, my cards, my custom cards. I designed these on Canva. So. Yeah, I ordered a bunch of these printed from Vistaprint. I have some more bubble wrap back there. My custom stickers in a roll that I also got from Vistaprint. Um, and just like some more tape items below. So that's that. More packing stuff. So these are my buffers, alcohol pads, some more buffers that I'm working through first before I get to these ones, um, nail files, bubble mailers, nano tape, and these are my little uh, cuticle kit bags. So not super exciting there. And this is kind of my junk drawer almost. It has a lot of the electronic equipment that I'm not currently needing. So like some cords, some extra chargers, some lights that I ended up not hanging up. Um, so just like anything that is room decoration related or extra electronics, I've just kind of been shoving in here. <laughs> so yeah, that's this set of drawers here. The next set of drawers is a little bit more interesting. So this set here 
is first a lot of my gel paints I put in this uh, this section so I have here my MPA art palette I keep it in there because yes I know this tin case will protect it from the Sun here it is but you know I, I don't know I'm, I'm paranoid so not only do I keep it in its tin case but I also keep it in this drawer here I have my Divock mini canvas collection. These are like my textured paints here in the rainbow colors. I haven't done a video with this yet. Um, I do really want to show it off soon. That is on the board over there. <laughs> I do have some ideas for it. Um, and then below that, I just have an actual palette for mixing these paints on. So that's that. This is my extra gel for the MPA art palette. These are my D-Gel painting gels, the D-Gel and Ginny crossover. Love this set too. It has a great variety of colors. If you're going to start with some painting gels, highly recommend this. And then these are two um, magnetic gel collections. They are from the Favori. They are the sparkling and glow magnetic collection. Um, super cute packaging. They come with these little ribbons that are just so cute to me. So sweet. But they are potted gels and I don't yet have like a really um, organized space for potted gels. So I just have them in with my other painting gels for now until I can figure out what I really want to do with them. Okay, let me get this closed back up. Okay, so that's the first drawer. Fake plant. <laughs> Second drawer is some of my filming and photography items. So I have some like fabric backdrops here. Um, I have some little decorative pieces that I use in some of my photographs for my sets. These little resin pieces here are some of my favorites. And then I also have some um, swatch cards that I have yet to complete. Um, this one being the tiny sunset collection, which actually I've had the longest out of all my gel nail sets. This was my first full Korean gel collection. I got it for Christmas. I have not done the swatch card yet. <laughs> so there's that one. Um, I have the Mayo Peach swatch card that I haven't done yet. Uh, I should move these. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna move them right there so that I remember to do them. So the next drawer is empty. More space for things. Empty again, more space. And then the last three drawers, I hate to say, are all nail tips. So I have my full collection of Prey nails here. I have almost every shape at this point um, and length. I really like using these for my press-ons because they're consistent. So I know that if a customer is so-and-so size in one shape, they're most likely gonna be so-and-so size in another. So that's why I did go ahead and invest in the Apre nail tips. And you can get the mini size boxes, so not the full 500, but the 200 um, for about half the price of the full size box, which for me personally was really good because I'm not going through these super quickly by all means. So by only having um, the smaller sizes, one, I can fit more in here, two, a prey sells refill bags. So if I do run out of like one size, it's super easy for me to just get a refill instead of having larger cases with more tips of all sizes when I most likely am never going to run through all of the tips um, for certain sizes that are less common. So. Yeah, if you're looking to get into a prey, check out the mini size, uh, mini tip boxes. Um, it might be more cost effective for you. Below that, I have all of my <laughs> email couture tips and my kind of like other branded tips. Um, these are all bagged, so I put them in the same spot. These are all the clear ones. I hate to say I have a whole bin of like the colored ones in my closet. I'm actually going to probably be giving away quite a few of these in an upcoming giveaway, which maybe if you stay to the end of the video, you might hear some about, but I will go over the giveaway details 
in the um, end of this video if you stick around. So here are those. And last but not least, um, more tips. <laughs> I have some McCart tips and some EC gel like, or I guess it's gel like EC. These tips are what I started with when I was making press ons. Um, I do really like them still, don't get me wrong, but the sizes of them, the zero size, however, fits my thumb, and I don't have the biggest thumb. So I was looking for a brand that had a little bit wider of a size range, which is how I ended up with a prey. So I do like these. I think they're super affordable. You can get them off of Amazon. Um, the quality is good. I personally like a somewhat thinner tip because my nail art tends to be pretty layered. I'm adding, you know, four or five layers of polish. And so I don't need something that's going to be like super thick to begin with. I actually need something thinner that I can build onto. So just know these are on the thinner side. Um, the McCart ones are not. The McCart ones are super sturdy. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, get the pump up specifically because these are going to be the PMMA resin not the acrylic okay so the pump up um for mccart is the soft gel nail tips from this brand and i do really like them i like the shape of them these ones are super sturdy though they're going to be thicker these are some korean gel tips that i was sent by sweetie nail supply to try out i love the shape of these these have a lovely almond shape unfortunately they are just a little bit too flat for, for my nail beds and a little bit too small. Um, I've noticed with a lot of like Korean brand tips, if you have larger finger sizes, they're not going to work for you. Probably has something to do with um, like standard sizes in Korea being a little bit smaller. But if you have larger nail beds, these are probably not going to work for you because the thumbnail for me was too small. Um, I think it's 13 millimeters and mine is like a, a 15 or a 14. So yeah, love the shape though. I'm so sad because the shape of these almond tips, let me actually just show you. You can see they're super long. So even though these are considered like a medium tip, the actual shape is almost a hybrid between like a medium or long. And I just, I love that length. So that is inside of these drawers. On top of the drawers, I have, um, first of all, a couple Divac collections that I, have done some filming for some swatches for but i do plan on integrating them into sets and so i'm keeping the packaging right now it is the let's see if i can open it with one hand so this is the new moon collection these are just gorgeous magnetic gels in a variety of colors lots of like pinks and purples and blues but that's the new moon collection and this one here is the once in a summer 2 collection this one just came out i think it's out of stock currently but i have no doubt that they'll probably be bringing it back due to popular demand this color is my favorite it's called july lake and it's a gorgeous like green magnetic gel with a yellow pigment in it super pretty Divac is quickly becoming one of my favorite gel brands from korea super nice colors really interesting collections too um so those are there because i'm planning on using them very soon here's just a rack of just different nail polishes um these ones were sent to me for pr so i have uh, like my Melody Susie here, my Blue Sky, my Nail Reserve LA. Because these are like the bigger round bottles, I have them on this rack here instead of up on these shelves because they just tend to fit better. So I have this rack of polishes. I have these little um, stacking drawers. So they stack on each other, but you can also separate them. So if you want to bring one elsewhere, they're really handy for that. And in here I just have like some glitters, um, more glitters, some eyeshadow palettes for doing ombres. Some of them don't open quite as easily. These are like caviar beads and some acrylic powders, just some clears, some whites for doing uh, textured nails. 
And here are all of my like dried flowers, seashells, and little flower cutouts. I keep those in one spot. On this chest of drawers, I also keep my brushes. So these are kind of like my catch-all brushes. A lot of them are cheaper from, you know, Timu, AliExpress, stuff like that. So I keep those in here. And then right next to that, I have my, I would say, luxury brushes. So these are my more expensive brushes and I have them organized by like liners, round brushes, square brushes, um, so that I can easily find what I need. All of these have their own caps, so I can put them in cap side down. That way um, I'm reducing the risk of sunlight curing any potentially uncured gel on here. I can also keep the brush loaded with a little bit of uncured gel, stick it in here, and I know it won't like leach back into the handle. So I keep my brushes here because as you can see, I kind of have this little corner in my room that is sheltered from the window. And so because of that, I am able to stick my brushes here and they won't have access to direct sunlight and they won't accidentally cure. I've had that happen before and it is very sad. So that's my brushes. This is my entire collection of Venalisa mud gels. These are the painting gels I started with. I'll show you here, I'm trying to not block the light. But they're these little potted gels. Um, so they're just little painting gels uh, and they fit perfectly in this little organizer that I have here. So that's those. These are a really good budget painting gel option. I will say I mostly gravitate now towards my my D-gel painting gels just because they are more pigmented. These do get a little bit sheer in some of the colors, but if you are just starting and you're looking for an affordable painting gel option, definitely I would say check out the Venalisa mud gel collection. Up on the wall are my swatches. So I keep my swatch sticks lined up here for easy access. And then my gel polishes. This is my favorite part of the room. Um, I have a lot, I know, but I kind of try to keep them organized. These are all some, like, uh, they're just a not as popular brand of syrup gels that I had purchased when I was just getting started before I kind of like could afford a lot of the Korean gel brands. Um, so this is what I started with. I do really like these. The brand is Mao Mia. Focus, please. There we go. The brand is Mao Mia nine milliliters and I got a wide variety of colors as you can see I am actually going to be giving away a lot of these in the giveaway um just because again I have now shifted somewhat towards Korean Japanese gel brands and so I have a lot of products to use I purchased these probably um a year and a half ago so they still have about a year of use before they expire. So what I want to do is I just want to give them to somebody who's going to use them. If not, they're going to sit on my shelf for the next year and expire. And I would feel bad kind of like wasting all this product. So these are probably going in the giveaway. Up here I have some of my Vetsy nail polishes, some of my McCart polishes. I also started with this budget brand. This is um, Gao. I don't know, um, Gao, maybe I really don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering that, but you can get it off of Amazon. They make really nice syrups, really nice uh, jelly colors. So these are those, more of that brand here, and some syrups, some color changing polishes. These are some cat eye polishes that I got off of like AliExpress. Um, they are really nice though. Vendini is one brand that I really recommend if you're looking for if you're looking for a cheaper cat eye gel that has really good shine still definitely check out Vendini some of same of these I think it's um Zyj I'd assume it's Zyj for the name um a lot of these are good I have seen some swatches though of some of the colors that maybe are not so good so I uh, you just you have to take the risk with those but those I would say are good budget brands Vendini and then I have all my born pretty stuff 
some of this they sent me, a lot of this I actually just bought myself. Because again, when I was starting, I didn't really have money for um, really nice Korean gels, and so I was looking for a really good budget-friendly option, and I had found Born Pretty. So a lot of these I will keep, because I do still use them. And then over here I have my Korean Japanese gels. So I have them somewhat organized. Up here I have Show Me Korea. These are a lot of my F gels. These are my Doi and some Yogurt Nail Korea. More Yogurt Nail Korea. These are my Mayo Peach collection. These are the Gel and Gel, which is a kind of new brand to me, but this is the Jinju collection. Super pretty shimmers. Have some First Street Jelly polishes here. The Divac Sakura collection, one of my absolute favorites. My Tiny Sunset collection. These are some Jinbi colors from the Sweet Tea collection. Just some top gels. I have all of my Divac top gels, the Azemi. And these are all my inks. These are kind of a new addition. If you haven't seen, I did a video on them on my channel doing a jellyfish look. You might have noticed they definitely settle. They do separate, so you do have to shake them, um, but then they will be brand new. And last but not least, I did pick up some of Zillaboost brand, the Gel Monster Collection. Um, this haul should be coming out somewhat soon too. I really like this. Um, I've found that it's a really good brand for somewhat affordable Korean produced cream colors. The only thing I don't love is the collection of colors that they currently have. I think it was a bit of a miss on some of the colors. A lot of the colors I really like, like obviously I picked up some of these here, but like the green collection I wish had some, just some different colors. Uh, the collections are curated by AI, which may be um, a factor in some of the uh, questionable decisions I would say, um, but I do really like the quality of these. I would say well worth it for a cream polish. I've also really heard that yogurt gel though has really nice cream polishes. So I will be experimenting more, doing some more reviews here for you guys. Um, moving along, this video is gonna be longer than I originally thought it was because I'm just kind of blabbing, but this is my closet. Uh, I keep a lot of things in here that I'm trying to hide, quite frankly. <laughs> Um, so we have like some extra soundproofing, the step ladder, power tools, um, stuff that I'm planning on mailing for giveaways, whatnot, go here, some Amazon things that I need to return, but my camera equipment, a lot of my tripods, some extra lights that I have are back here, and some of the packaging um, for nail collections that I'm having a hard time throwing away, but I want to keep. I have some dust collector filters here, some extra, um, some extra plastic cases for my press-ons. This is a package that I still need to review for you all, so that's here. I have just like some old tech cases, that's my keyboard case. It has some tools in it that I need to keep, which is why I'm keeping the case, and some paint. So this closet's not too exciting, kind of boring actually. Over here is my nail desk. So this is my new camera setup. Um, I did go ahead and purchase a really nice rig because I'm now filming on a camera that is somewhat expensive. And so I just, I don't wanna take chances with a cheap rig and have it fall. The rig that I used to use was this with my phone. If you are just starting out, Please do not feel like you have to go out and buy a super expensive camera and rig. I was filming my original videos on my phone with this Yulonzi phone stand. It worked perfectly fine, it was pretty good quality for what it was. So please do not think that you need to go out and get like all of this to make good content. I just am in a position currently where I can invest in improving my content and so I made this investment hoping that I will not have to upgrade for the next few years because I now have a good setup 
that is working for me. So that's my rig. I'll have it linked in case you want to pick it up yourself. It is the newer rig. Here are my lights. I have multiple lights. I have three actually to get a good balance of light in my shots. So this light comes with the Lonzi stand. That light back there is part of this two pack from Dasney. I do really like these. Um, this is kind of janky right now. I need to figure out how to better mount this light onto this new rig that I have. Work in progress. Here on my desk, I keep my liquids, so acetone, alcohol, this eventually will be for acetone, a little damping dish, my wipes, my pin care lamp, my tablet in case I want to pull up some inspo pictures here. And then this is supposed to hook up to my camera and be like a little preview for me to be able to see what I'm actually filming. I haven't gotten it to work yet. It worked perfectly fine with my phone, my Galaxy, but with my camera, I'm having trouble. So I'm still troubleshooting this, hoping it will work, hoping that I don't have to go out and get yet another sort of external monitor, though I am also looking into being able to attach it to my tablet here. That might be a solution. But yeah, that's my desk. I just have a silicone mat to protect it. A little trash bin here, another plant, and here is another chest of drawers. <laughs> um, I have a lot of them, I know, it's kind of crazy. I have a little dustpan here for keeping things clean. My dust collector just sits on top of here because I don't know where else to put it right now. In this cup drawer, I have my gloves, my nitrile gloves, my bottles of like acetone, alcohol, all of that, some extra lint-free wipes. This bin here is actually all of my nail sets. So I use these little jewelry bags you can get them from Michael's. They're just little teeny tiny Ziplocs and I store all of my old nail sets in them. I do want to eventually um, get them moved to a display that I have. It's actually up there. I just haven't had the time yet. So those are in here for now. Second drawer is more like nail wipes more nail wipes, these little clips for soaking off your nails, these makeup sponges for doing ombres and cleaning off chrome, these sponges for doing ombres, q-tips, nothing super exciting in there. Down here I have more gloves, some aprons that I got, um, and mostly monomer, I'll be honest, there's monomer here, there's monomer there, alcohol, my hand rest, and a couple more um, gel sets. These are older gel sets, Beatles. I don't even know what brand that is. It might be time to retire this one, to be honest, um, because I think it's starting to separate a little bit. So yeah, that drawer is just like nail tools. This little cart here I have under my desk because it's super handy to just um, pull out when I need it. I can move it around. It doesn't take up too much space. But this is kind of like my basics that I use most of the time for every set. So I have like my clear gels here, primers, preps, base gels, matte polishes, foil glue, all this sort of stuff goes here. This is my um, like clear thicker consistency gels. So I have my Sculpting gel, some of them here, a builder gel, another builder gel, some um, rhinestone adhesion gels, those all go on top of the cart. And then in the cart, cap drawer is some more brushes, <laughs> um, my nail tools like my daughter's, my silicone tools, some files, eyeshadow applicators, two dusting brushes. Um, some like orange wood sticks, more brushes. It's kind of a mess. I probably need to sort through this at some point and get a better organization system. But these are like tools, applicators, and here are all of my magnets. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. What can I say? Those are all my magnets. I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but I think it's going to start raining soon. It is quite windy outside. <laughs> Second drawer, 
are the tools that I use more often than not. So I have like some of my flash carrying lamps. This actually should go on my desk. Wipes, file, little trays, um, all of my like metal implements that I don't really know what to do with are in here. I have like my nippers, my box cutter, scissors, um, some, <laughs> some cuticle oil. Uh, these are all just kind of like loose tools that I'm always reaching for and I want to have easy access to. Again, not the best organization system, uh, but for my purposes, it works fine. This drawer here is more tools. I have like little dust collectors um, for acrylic dusting, some like gem trays, my old handheld file that has served me well but quite honestly, um, it's definitely very cheap. <laughs> um, some of my drill bits. I recently purchased uh, a drill bit holder that's a little bit nicer that I will be transferring those to. A little cleaner for the drill bits, some cotton pads. All of my palettes are here. So I have some acrylic ones, some glass ones, some paper ones, uh, my palette knives. Those are all there. Oh gosh. These are all my nail stands. I know I have a lot of them and it's mostly because I'm often working on more than one design at a time. So I have all these in here. I also, for some reason, threw some of my random swatch sticks uh, in this drawer. Should probably move those, should probably clean them. That's a problem for me in the future though. <laughs> Here are a lot of my um, like special effects gels. So I have my metallic gels here, um, some gold painting gels, my tube gels, like my McCart rhinestone glue, the autofocus on this. So this is my McCart rhinestone glue. I love this stuff. So I have this in here. Um, this here is another type of rhinestone glue, but with a skinnier nozzle. That's in here, some more uh, solid gels, um, spider gels, embossing gels, uh, embossing gels, some chrome gels, some like uh, more spider gels, more glitters, those kinds of things. Those are all in here. Here's my drill, a lighter, some sticky tabs, and I had actually won a McCart nail art contest last Halloween, and they gave me a gift card to buy a bunch of their products online, and I had picked up this McCart nail drill. Now, I didn't use it much just because, um, actually, let me rephrase that. I never used it. In the first place, I don't do a lot of drilling since I'm mostly working in press-ons. Secondly, I was always too lazy. This was always hidden in the bottom of like another drawer with my old setup, so I just never felt like getting it out. I would just use my, um, my little handheld drill instead when I needed to do something. So it's actually never been used. That is also going in the giveaway. The giveaway is going to be for someone who is maybe just starting on nails, hopefully, and who needs a lot of these products to get themselves going. So yeah, this drill, again, I've never used it. I did open it to look at it, but I've never used it. That's going in the giveaway. Okay, so that's that cart. That's the tools I use all the time. Uh, this is my computer setup. I don't know if you really wanna see it, uh, but I have my nail lamp here. This is my main one. I just, I don't have room for it on my actual desk. And I kind of like it here because I can turn it away from my set, whatever I'm working on and not accidentally cure something because it is bright. Let me show you. It's bright. Um, I worry about accidentally carrying something if I have it facing my nail desk. So actually it works out well that it's here. This is my audio setup. So I have a mic stand and then my Shure, I think it's an MB7 mic. I don't remember. I will put it linked in the description, but the stand makes it super easy just to move it around. That way I can record from both my desk when I'm doing voiceover and actually my nail desk when I'm doing like an unboxing or something like that. So that's that. This is a mixer for it. 
some headphones that I don't really use. They're hand-me-downs for my boyfriend. I actually use that set, so I don't even know why I have those on my desk right now. But this is my desk mat. Just got it from Amazon. And this is my keyboard. I love this thing. It is a recent purchase, as in somebody got it for me for my birthday. Thank you to my parents. They're lovely. Uh, this is the Keyboom Phantom 81, I think. The number might be off, but it's the Keyboom Phantom. It is full RGB. You can even customize the colors of the RGB here. As you can see, like some of them are green. I love a pink and green combo. Um, but it's really cool because it's this clear acrylic, so you can see like all the lights underneath. I really like it. If you don't like the clear, you can replace the keycaps, but they do sound really nice too. Um, let me, let me show you. I believe it's what tech nerds call um, a thocky keyboard. <laughs> I'm not quite at that level yet, but I do like a good keyboard. I have been looking more into them. Um, here's my desktop with my favorite Kirby. I have two monitors. It's just really helpful for both work and editing. This is an older um, Alienware monitor and that's just like a, a cheaper, I don't even know, I think it's an Acer monitor. I got my speakers behind my monitor and that's really it for like my tech stuff. My computer's under there. Ignore the awful wiring situation that I have underneath my desks. I really need a solution. I just haven't figured one out yet because I have so many cords. So, so many cords. It's a mess, I know. But yeah, that's all my tech stuff. I do eventually want to upgrade my desk because this desk is a hand-me-down as well from my boyfriend. And as you can see, it's like, it's not in perfect condition. So eventually I will upgrade, but that brings us to this last chest of drawers here, and this is the fun one. This is my favorite one. So on top of it, I have my flowers here that I use in my shots. All my fake flowers just go in this little vase here. I have a ring holder for rings uh, that I often wear in product photos. This little sorter here has a lot of my loose glitters, my pigments. I should probably move this to over on the other side, but for now, it's fine here. I got a lot of these off of AliExpress. They're really pretty though. I, I need to use these more, quite honestly, because they're gorgeous glitters and pigments. So that's all my glitters. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. Inside the drawer is exciting stuff though. So top drawer is all acrylic charms. I got this big bag of pearl acrylic charms. Some more big bags of like pearls, some Fimo slices, um, some like Sanrio charms here. Uh, these are all filled with different kinds of pearls in different colors. These are just bead organizers from Michaels. I try to go there and just get them with like a weekly coupon. It makes them much more affordable. So I have all of those. I have, oh, kind of hard to do with one hand. Um, I have more Fimo slices back here. Show you. Oops. More pearls, more Fimo slices, some acrylic flowers, that sort of thing. Oops. And then these are all just different white glitters, white flakes. More white glitters with different aura effects. I know they all look the same, but I swear they have different shifts to them. Some purple glitter. Those are my really fine glitters. I also have this set of glitters from Enel Couture that was in one of the scoops. Those up there. Here I have just some more pearls and some pearl organizing um, trays that I keep in here that. Here are some of my resin charms. As you can see, I have my character charms in here. Some Hello Kitties, some Kirby's, Karomi's, Cinema Roll, some little, little teddy bears, some frames. More resin charms. So I have butterflies, flowers, fish, moon and stars, candy, that sort of thing. 
in there. And then more resin charms. I have just like little pieces here that look like stone pieces, some hearts, some little bubbles, gummy bears, mermaid tails, sea stars, more little just like uh, rounded resin charms. These are like the aura crystal ones in resin. These are all butterflies here. And then I have some angels and angel wings. So that's that one. Here are all my resin bows. I have quite a few types, just in different colors. There we go. These are all my resin bows. And then just some like little extra resin things. I, I need to throw these ones away. So the only thing about resin is that if you let it sit out in the sun at all, it can yellow. And like this is like a cheaper resin, I'm pretty sure, because they were fairly inexpensive. So just be aware of that. I am gonna toss these and I probably won't ever purchase again cheaper clear resin charms just because they do yellow so easily and so quickly. And then these are all charms that I personally have molded. So I do really like using resin molds. It is something I enjoy because you can customize, make the colors that you want. So I just made all of these at some point and needed a place to store them. Okay, so that is the resin charms drawer. Let me put all this back. Next up, we have metal charms, and this is my favorite drawer. So here I have all my metal things, like my wires, um, paper clips, my uh, wire jig, my set of jewelry pliers, cutters, that goes there. And then I have all of my organizers with my metal charms. If you saw my recent ASMR video, I did an organize with me where I took all the charms and I put them in these cases, but that one's not full yet. This one is, these are all just metal alloy charms of different kinds. Oh, you know what? I do have one spot left. Probably will be filled very soon though. <laughs> so those are there. I also have this big case, which is a bunch of um, rhinestones. Let me show you. Okay, so these are all um, like rhinestones and chains of sorts. Just rhinestone mixes that I've gotten over the years. I keep them all in here. These are nice because they open individually. So like this little um, thing will open and I can pour them all out, pour them back in and never disturb the ones next to them. I do really like these cases here, um, but it does have one cover. So when I open this up, everything is now open and I can't like work with these individually if I wanted. So I think this looks nicer than this kind, but this kind I think is a little bit more um, accessible in terms of wanting to dump everything out of one into a separate tray. So looks nicer, a little bit more user friendly. And then these three you might have seen before. I love these the most. These are bead organizers from Michaels. They are kind of expensive, so I wait for them to go on sale before getting them. But it's one big case with a bunch of little smaller containers inside that each close on their own. So you can take them out, just grab the one that you want to work with and pull it out for your set and then put them back and they're nice and organized. So I have one, Two, these are all like crystals and rhinestones of sorts. And three, three of these cases. I have so many charms that I really need to start using. <laughs> this one is like all of my, my metal alloy charms, the bigger ones that have crystals included. I love this case. This one again is more like my glass crystals, my resin crystals, those sorts of things. And this one air bows and some more metal alloy charms and like some chains and stuff. So that is in there. 
up next is um, somewhat disorganized. I have an extra one of those grids for later. These are my chalk pastels. So I'd seen Dreamy Little Nails do her ombres with chalk pastels instead of pigments. So I picked up the Faber-Castell 72 soft pastels. I have used it once and it worked really well. Pigments are probably easier because these are a little bit harder, they're a little bit denser. So what I had to do was kind of like color the pastel on a piece of paper to loosen the pigments and then use them. Um, but I will say the colors are super nice and you get a good variety and it's not that expensive versus some of the pigment palettes, they can get kind of pricey. So I have that, I have some glow in the dark pigment powder here that I've experimented with before and not posted because I couldn't get it right yet. And then all of my foils are in this organizer. I did indeed take all of my foils out of their original packages, twist them tighter and put them in this little container here. It took a really long time. Um, it was not a fun project. I just put on music and basically spent like three hours uh, retwisting foils, but it has saved me so much room. I mean, look at how many foils I have in here. A lot of these were part of the email couture scoops. If you know what I'm talking about, you know that you probably got lots and lots and lots of foils that took up a lot of space. So this is a great space saver for me. This is just some like more decorative pieces, female beads, acrylic flowers, some more little acrylic pearls, more pearls, caviar beads, some metal studs. So I have all of these like sea themed metal studs that I keep in here. Um, yeah, that's that. And here I do have some pigments. These activate in black light. Actually, I think these glow in the dark too, but pigments, more glow powder, a couple acrylics, um, baby oil for my aquarium nails. Speaking of which, this drawer has all my aquarium nail inserts. So I have my syringes, a bunch of different types of sequins, some foils, more sequins. Most of these are sequins. Some of them are rhinestones that are in these like uh, little plastic separators. I didn't want to take them out and try to reorganize them, so I left them in these. And because these are all the same size, I just organized them all together. But yeah, I have tons of different sequins, things like Mylar flakes. I'm excited to use, oops. I am excited to dig these out again for fall. These are like little maple leaves. Um, Let's see, what else do I have in here that's interesting? Um, these are all my chrome powders. It's a mess. Uh, I need to figure out a better system because right now I just have them all piled in here. So yeah, I'm not really gonna show too much of this because it's, uh, again, it's a mess. Um, and I haven't really gotten around to fixing it yet, but this is where all my chrome powders are. I do have some Aurora film here that I felt was fitting to be in this drawer. So that's that. Up next, I have just some more potted gels. These are like extras if I have extra nail glue. I have some extra crazy top thick because she's amazing. More thick uh, gels. My poly gels are in here that I don't really use too much anymore. Some of these might go in a giveaway too just because I, just, I don't use poly gel a lot anymore. And a lot of this stuff, I don't wanna go to waste. So I'm trying to really put in this giveaway a lot of the things that I know are still good to use, but that I personally know I won't be using. Um, so yeah, poly gels, um, a lot of my acrylics are in here, builder gels, nonstick extension gels, four in one glues, that kind of thing are all in here. My extra like top gels and stuff. I really like this top gel. This is the um, D-Gel Signature Top, non-scratch. Um, it's really strong. The only thing is, I just found out doing my recent House of the Dragon set, this stuff does not go well over black. So it's perfect for every other color, but for black polishes, it just has a slight cloudiness to it that is not noticeable in any other, um, any, any other set. 
but with black you do. Down here I have my resin, my resin molds, and um, like my, I don't, I guess, I guess these are resin molds. I don't really know what you call them. They're the ones that are like uh, sticker makers, 3D sticker makers. So I have all of my resin molds down here and my sticker makers. That's that drawer. Okay, we're getting to the end of it. And last but not least, down here I have some more resin tools, my mixers, that kind of thing. My stamping plates. So, these two here are my books of stamping plates. I have tons. I went a little crazy buying stamping plates at some point. Um, so I have like all of these different designs. I try to keep them organized, but you know how things go. So I have these ones. And then I also have all of these. <laughs> Here they are. More stamping plates, lace designs, random patterns. Um, more patterns. I have a lot of like Asian themed stamping plates because I really appreciate the Asian art style, Chinese, Japanese aesthetics, um, Korean art styles. I, I am adopted from China, so um, I do have Asian ancestry, but I don't know as much about the culture as I would want because my parents are um, white, so maybe that's where my appreciation of like Asian cultures comes from. Uh, I don't know. I just like the way it looks. And then I do have a luxury stamping plate here. I got this off of AliExpress. You have to like email the seller asking for pictures because I think if they um, post it on the site, it will get taken down because they are logos of luxury brands. But I thought this would be super useful and versatile if anybody wants a luxury set that has all the different brands on it. Um, so yeah, these are my stamping plates. And then I have like my fishing wire here, ribbon for these kinds of designs. And here are all of my sticker books. Let me pull these out. So stickers, right. Um, this one here is a sticker book that has the dividers in it. So these are smaller sticker sheets. These are more of like the water decal stickers. Lots of butterflies. Flowers, leaves, that sort of thing. I've also got some little cutesy ones, some little animals, um, little cats, um, some tattoo style ones. That's those. Here I have a lot of my uh, like stencils, my airbrush stencils. I have my really nice decals. So these are really fancy water decals. I ordered some from Odai Nails. She also sent me some. Um, they're really high quality, super detailed images. Let me see if I can zoom in on them for you here. But yeah, you can see here, super detailed, really nice quality water decals. They are more expensive than what you would get from like Temu or whatever, but I think the quality is worth it. I do plan on using these in an upcoming set. I have already used them if you want to check that out. I will try to remember to put the video like right here in the corner. It's my koi nail look, but really like those. I will try to remember to tag her below. And here are my just like basic stickers. This book is completely full. I have flowers and patterns and butterflies and moons and stars, little patterns, gummy bears, all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, lots of these. If you would like me to do like a sticker tour, um, maybe comment down below. That's something I could consider doing like a sticker and stamping plate tour. 
because I know stickers, stamping plates are a lot more beginner friendly for some of you who are just looking to get into nail art. I think that's a great way to go. So let me know if that's something you'd want to see. Okay, and last but not least, I just wanted to show off my decorative wall here. I have all my stuffed animals up here. Um, I do like cutesy things, so I do still collect some stuffed animals from just different IPs that I like. I have some of my really nice decorative boxes for gel polish up here. Some little figurines, if you might have seen, I recently got into blind boxes, so I did an opening of that here on my channel. These are some of my favorites down here. I love Kirby and Cinema Roll. Those are probably my two favorite characters. Little elf girl from my recent unboxing. Another plant. Some swatch cards up here of just different collections that I have. The Karomi Apre kit that I still need to do a video on, but this case is too cute to not display. Some more little figures here. More swatch cards of different collections that I have. More figures. All very cute. So up here is a display card that I eventually want to add my various designs to my previous sets, but we'll see when I get to that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of it. This is my cat's area. He has his little tower, his tent, and then we got him this cute little fake bush. It's meant to, you know, stimulate them, allow them to pretend like they're a fierce hunter outside. Um, don't look at that, I just realized. I will probably need to blur that out. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything. So here's the room one more time. So that was the tour. I hope you found that informative, if not just entertaining, I don't know. I always love seeing people's nail setups, so I wanted to do a video of my own. Um, let me know how you guys feel about um, the face cam. <laughs> um, it sounds kind of weird to say that, to ask that, like, how do you like seeing my face? Um, I actually don't like being on camera that much, so this is it's something new for me, but if you like it, I will try to do more live intros, maybe some live voiceovers for my nail tutorials. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, just let me know. And let me know if you have any other video ideas. I, I like branching out from just the tutorials, just the hauls, and kind of doing these more vlog style videos with you all. I think they're really fun and I like watching them from other creators. So let me know if you have video ideas down below. As for the giveaways, I will have the two. So there will be one with a dust collector and one with the e-file, both of which I've never used before. I purchased them before I got some PR and so I don't need them any longer and I hate to see them just sitting around collecting dust. So I will be giving away two different packages the dust collector and the e-file along with a bunch of the gel polishes that I have that I just I haven't been using and I know that they have probably about a year left on them before they expire. A lot of them I've opened to swatch at least and so I feel badly having them just like sitting on my shelves and I'm hoping that they can go to a couple people who just you know maybe they're getting started they don't have a big collection and they want to add some gel polishes to their inventory 
So yeah, um, they are kind of like budget friendly brands. Some is from Enel Couture, some is from AliExpress. I, again, I have swatched all of them and I've never had any like allergy issues, but I don't think they're HEMA free, just so you know. Um, they do have the brands on them if you want to look up the ingredients if you are the winner and you get the package. But yeah, I don't think they're HEMA free, unfortunately. Some of it will be. And in exciting news, I also received some PR of some magnetic gels in little pots. And I really like them. I just, I have so many magnetic gels right now that I'm using, that I'm excited about using. And these ones, I just, I don't foresee myself using them too often. And again, I hate to have them just sit there going to waste basically. So if you enter the giveaway and win, you do have a chance at getting some really nice potted magnetic gels. These are from the Favori, which is a Korean brand, I think, but they're designed in Tokyo. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Um, but yeah, so I will throw in a few pots of that magnetic gel as well along with some other gels and some other supplies that I think would be awesome for somebody who is just getting started. So if you want the dust collector, why don't you comment in the comments down below a flower emoji of some sort. So that's for the dust collector, a flower emoji. And if you want to enter for the e-file, why don't we do, let's do the peach emoji. So flower emoji for the dust collector and for the e-file, the peach emoji. And that way I know if you are interested in the giveaway. Um, thank you so much again for just being here, for watching. I appreciate it so much. Check out my Discord link below if you'd like to connect outside of YouTube. I do want that to just be a space where, you know, all of us nail enthusiasts can get together and chat all things nails. I have all of my discount links down below too if you would like to pick yourself up something and support me at the same time. I always really appreciate that. It helps more than you know with this channel and with funding my nail habits and being able to do all of the fun hauls and stuff with you guys. Thank you again for just being here. I hope you are having a wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Bye! camera time for me today.